Well, good morning and happy Wednesday. Hope your week is going well. Well, this morning, um, I'm happy to say or afraid to say, it depends on your opinion of this, we're going to be building some window tracery, but I thought I'd give you the context on why and uh, tell you why this will be satisfying. The reason it'll be satisfying is I know what I'm doing, thank goodness. Um, the other reason, of course, will be that uh, this is actually finishing a bit of window tracery that I started two years ago. I thought I'd finished it, but I hadn't. And I'm at the point now where I'm starting to put all of the content and all of the design work together and creating the kind of tutorial slash demo level for the game. And important to the tutorial it are the two different types of building mechanic that you have in the game or rebuilding mechanic. And uh, that's introduced with the window tracery that fills this window right here. This is the west window of the tower of the parish church. And right now it's just a great big hole in the geometry of the wall. But um, when you rebuild this wall, you see there's a great big window gap, and then there'll be a little bit of uh, kind of particle effects right here to let you know that there's something kind of live here that you can interact with. And um, when you mouse over that, you will get a ghosted view of some window tracery. And if you go, if you roll your mouse wheel, or if you press your arrow keys forward or backwards, you can actually um, see two different ghosted versions of window tracery and you just pick one and it rebuilds it and that kind of introduces the concept of being able to have choice in some of the areas that you rebuild so i had actually started working on the outlining for this window tracery two years ago it was in december 2018 um right about now actually that uh, i was building this up and i built window tracery for other parts in the building but apparently I forgot to ever finish this so we're going to work on this one today I've actually been working on it a little bit yesterday so here it is this is one part of it and uh, we're just going to kind of continue forward building this one and I can see that in the stream the um, color of the edges isn't really showing up particularly well so if you just hold on with me for just a minute I'm going to make those a little bit brighter so that we can all see them. I turned down the colors um, because I needed to be able to see shape instead of just edges, but right now in this wireframe view, it'd be nice to see the edges with a little more clarity. So I just need to figure out what they call them here in the settings. And then there we go, inactive edges. That's the one we're looking for. So let's bring those right up. Okay. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, so you can see these edges a little bit better. So this is all my setting out. This will be a simple set of perpendicular style Gothic window tracery. We're going to have perp and we're going to have decorated gothic, which is a little bit older form. Uh, and it's just going to be a really simple reticulated gothic window because um, I, can, I can hammer one of those out pretty quickly. And I'd like to kind of keep moving on. But right now we're doing the perpendicular one, which is also relatively easy to do. So this is just one of the heads of, the, it's a three light window and it's kind of a fairly tall and severe. And so we have fairly tall and severe heads I should have depressed these a little bit, I suppose, when I was laying out, but um, let's just keep moving on rather than focusing on those tiny details of art history. The art historians amongst you might cringe at that, but uh, I've got to make some efficiency somewhere. So I've built the just this first half. So um, you can see my laying out here. Here's the main window head. Um, Here's the different forms, and then all these overlapping circles are the cusps on the tracery. Just cusps are always the hardest part. So essentially, we have a big one of these with um, two cusps per side. So it's called a um, sink foil light because it will eventually have one, two, three, and then four, five kind of lobes or leaves to it. So um, five foil light. 
we have going up here um, a little one, and this is for the upper window head tracery. And so we'll we'll use these two base pieces to start to fill out the window. So um, I've got all of my tracery carving or my my setting outlines for that ready to go as well. So let's carry on. I'm going to um, duplicate these two bits of of tracery and we'll start moving them around and tearing them apart and building them back up again. So these aren't actually 3D objects at this time. I'll show you. Doo -doo. So you can see that right now they're flat, but um, we'll pop those out into 3D. We'll do the kind of origami move once we've laid out all the geometry for this. Once again, I'm making these windows too high poly. I don't seem to be able to uh, restrain myself to doing anything more sensible. We'll all just have to live with that for now. So, because to me these feel low poly, because um, I am used to making very expensive geometry. So I'm just checking that in my overlapping windows here, my overlapping geometry here that I haven't um, I don't have any duplicated verts. If I did, I would have um, welded them together. Uh, yeah, we don't want to do that. Well, so I accidentally duplicated all of my geometry because I must have just done a select all. Yep, I certainly did. So that's okay. We'll just move this stuff. So let's get our snapping back on and select the ones we want. And now We've snapped those together. Um, this is a little bit too pinched at the top here. I should have made this a little bit fuller, but that's okay. Again, mistakes were made, but we can go on here. So we can see here, I've just selected this vert and we can look over here and it says selected total. We have two points selected total. So that means that all of these verts in this row are duplicated, which is what I would expect. So let's weld those guys together pretty quickly here. The nice thing about this perpendicular window tracery um, is that it's easy to build and it's easy to lay out. I didn't, I didn't really need a reference for it. I could just kind of lay this out really fast, which might historically have been one of the attractions of this type of um, window tracer, this kind of geometric design. So that's our tracery light head. Uh, laying out, but we don't really need that anymore because we've already built that. So what I'm trying to find here is just the overall outline and shape of the window, which is right there. And this is going to give us our kind of guidelines. These are our mullions. Um, those one, two, and there'll be another one coming straight up the middle here. So um, all I need to do now is I need to just start moving these things around. Uh, so we can actually, let's start moving around this main light here. So it feels nice to be getting back towards something I feel like I know what I'm doing. It really is nice. So let's go copy paste our polys, copy polys, paste polys and select. Convert my selection to points and move these guys over my snapping still on very good that should line up right with the middle and it doesn't that's because i'm just a little bit off so we'll have to fix that but again we'll fix it in post so to speak but some of these things should be overlapping a little bit better than they are So let's get them to snap together. Snap this to the intersection right there. And that almost perfectly lines up with the middle, but not quite, but that's okay. Like I said, we'll fix it and no one will be any the wiser. One thing I really love about window tracing, and I often thought about making it a like a logo for a company or something like that was um, this part here when you get two lights 
through two heads or two main lights coming together. It works better on a sunk foil like this, quatrefoil, um, not a little trefoil window like this. But anyway, um, if you just look at just this part on its own, um, it's a really cool shape. It kind of looks like, I don't know, deer antlers or something. And you can kind of get it down here to look and start looking like a skull. Um, it's cool design, edgy. Okay, let's keep building these together. What else needed some joining here? These guys are gonna need some joining. And these need to be deleted. That's an interesting bit of left behind. That might be the center of a circle. Anyway, um, that's together. So we're just gonna fill this hole up. Fairly easy, let's turn off the snapping here. So keep it quads as best as we can. There's always a few triangles in window tracery, like this one right here, where the two systems branch. But overall, pretty good. Let's think about how we're going to duplicate these. That's so close. <clears throat> Should we lay down another spline? Because we need another set of these. So let's grab these guys. These mullions, let's take the mid mullion, let's duplicate it again, call it center mullion. Mullions, the up and down linear bits of a window, um, and the horizontal linear bits are, of course, called the transom. And let's throw this into world position Z0. Yep. work well enough here? Yeah, okay. Okay, so the center mullion's there, that's gonna give me enough. All I'm going to do is take each one of these, and just bring it over the hair that it needs to go over to be perfectly lined up in the center. And that's going to be our main point, main axis of symmetry for the rest of uh, the project. So we're gonna work on the right side. And once that's all done and popped into 3D, we'll just duplicate it over and we'll have a complete set of windows. Set of tracery, I mean. So um, I haven't started building the kind of top side of the tracery yet, and we should probably get into doing that now. The top side is where we get the most overlap. Um, and so in order to be as efficient as I could be, I built the underside, which has a little less overlap. So um, let's grab this first and start to figure out where we're going to set this. Let's turn off our snapping. Um, what we're going to do is ideally we're going to just move this up to the point at which the arras, which is the kind of highest, narrowest flat part of the tracery, overlaps the arras of the surrounding window for head, which is about right here. Yep, so that's about where we are. So we'll have two there, and then the next one, we'll copy and paste it, we'll line it up onto this, and it will do similar overlapping right here. And then we'll think about whether we put a little mini transom in here as a bit of a nod to the transition between decorated and perpendicular architecture. We'll see about that. Okay, we've got to be converting this again. 
It's turning on our snapping. We're going to be snapping to spline. Let's grab this and oh crud, wrong tool. Let's move this over to here. Well, that's what I get, I suppose, uh, for being clever. There we go, because it goes to that point, silly person. <clears throat> I snapped it to the wrong side and then thought, oh crud, I got my tracery measurements wrong again, which happens all the time. Oops. But I hadn't gotten it wrong this time. Okay, and we're gonna move it to about right here. That's where those two overlap as well. I was just thinking about one thing I haven't moved. I probably should have moved the entire bit of tracery um, setting out, and I'll show you why. So I probably should have moved, let's turn off the cusps because they're just difficult to see. Okay, so the cusps are turned out. I should have moved this top, this whole set of setting out because I do need the top part of the lines because I need to see where all this stuff overlaps. So I think I'm going to just duplicate this and move it around. So let's move that one. And it gets to come up to here at some point. probably there. So let's turn on our snapping. This time we're going to snap to an edge to get that to snap in perfectly. Pretty good. Okay. And we're going to duplicate this again. And we're going to head out to here. I just had to remember where it was I was snapping this to. And then let's snap it to spline. There we go. All right, crisis avoided. I'm glad I managed to notice that before I got too much further and then I would have gotten into this geometry and then everything would have collapsed for me as I would have suddenly realized I didn't know where all of this complicated little tiny inner light overlapping is happening. So for example, um, it's gonna be happening around here I'm going to have a little diamond shaped light, a little triangular shaped light here, a little diamond shaped one there. Okay, so now we get to decide what we want to do with our tracery. Um, actually, we really don't need to decide that either at this point. I was just thinking about whether we put a little mini transom in across here or not, just for, just for kicks. One that kind of maybe comes out of the springing of these arches and just kind of ties this across here just for fun. I don't know. Maybe we just leave it as a really simple perpendicular window and move on. I don't know. Anyway, let's uh, let's finish building out the geometry now. We've got our basic forms in place. Let's turn off those cusps so that we just have more of our main geometry to deal with because um, it starts to get confusing at this point. So now we're looking at the intersection of these two. Let's get rid of our center line. There we go. Let's make it as less confusing as we possibly can. Uh, let's get rid of that in our mullions as well. That's why that didn't go away. There. Yeah. Okay. So I've gotten rid of all of the superfluous kind of setting outlines for our geometry here. And now we're back into it. So let's just start building. 
so we're looking at, so we've got um, this part of the heiress, this part, this is where they meet up, and we've got to find a way to make those meet up and get along all right. Just looking here at how we're going to handle this stuff. I'm just going to have to do some adapting. I'm going to make that a little bit thicker because this is going to be a little bit thinner. All right. So we're going to do, I don't know, at the end of the day, this doesn't make a great deal of difference. I mean, we could do something like this where we pinch it all in. But that makes it pretty rough here. So we might move this bit to right there where there's an intersection of these two. Yep, no one will notice that. We might split this one out. There we go. That's good enough. So we'll just keep going up sides here. So we've got a very angular side that it's the here. Let's look. This is actually very low poly, this window head, you can see the facets. Um, and so we don't need to um, be quite as high poly in the window head as we have been here in the tracery lights. So we can go ahead and just snap diverts. And keep building this up until we run into a problem until we run into uh, where we're starting to combine again which is about right here so now we're gonna have to figure out how we combine these two bits of tracery so i'm just kind of turning my head one way and another to try to get a sense of this intersection of the tracery right here this is a really complicated section where we've got the intersection of this little tracery light and we've got the mullion and we've got the outer frame of the window, all three objects meeting right here. So I'm trying to kind of set out how that meeting is going to work out. I mean, in the end, it doesn't really make a whole lot of difference. Let's stick that in there. Let's just patch some holes here. Oh, that's why that's going to make some difference. This one. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to put our cut right here, I think, actually. There we go. So let me think about this. We've got a quad. We've got an awkward quad. We've got a little triangle there, a little triangle there. That's all probably going to be fine. We'll see how this works out um, once we start building in this section here, which is going to be this outer section. It's going to be a little bit awkward. And now we're going to do this little bridge. think 
about it. So um, I actually have some completely built perpendicular tracery that's the same pattern, which is also why this was easier to build, but it's for a window of different proportions. Um, I'm just going to look at it for some reference here for just a minute. Yeah, we're still lining up that way. So I guess we were lining up with the, that's fine. Just looking at the relationship between the surround of the window and the heads of the little tracery lights. And they're, they're fine. So this is the window tracery from the aisles. And I thought that the window tracery from the aisles was the same proportions as the tower west window and then shock and shock <clears throat> it's different so i have to make some new window tracery so that's the whole reason we're doing this today so i'm going to cheat a little bit here and i'm going to just pop that bit up right there okay let's carry on this up to its edge. Okay, and we're good to go again. And we'll run right up to here. This one makes my job a little bit easier. Always grateful for that. And pop that one up there a little bit. Yeah, that was far easier, which is great. Okay, we're gonna have to do a cut right here. Let's turn off my snapping. Okay, not bad, we can keep going on. We'll finish this off in one more, finish this part of the tracery off in one more quad. Ta-da, there we go. So that's the framework for the window tracery. Um, we'll keep working on this now. This looks so awkward. You're not really going to see it in the final product. It's all just going to blend in there. OK, now we're going to work on these intersections of all of this kind of material, except we won't because I need to build this up really quickly. So we got to do this window, this, this head here first. So let's build down from here. Let's see how far we're going to need to go to join these guys up. So I think I'm going to run it down to the intersections. That intersection and ugh, no cinema. Stop thinking you know better than me. Fine, we'll do it this way. So cinema's polygon pen tool, which is their kind of fancy tool for building things up one poly at a time or one vert at a time it thinks it knows best and puts in all sorts of cuts and other things where you don't want them. I find it irritating. Okay, so we're going to run a couple of cuts. We'll see what I'm doing here in a minute. So a couple of cuts here. Stitch them all together. There we go. Fill this hole. All right, now that's joined up. 
Good. Okay. Now back to what we were doing. What we were doing is we're going to be doing this kind of outside bit, and this is the really deeply sloping part of the tracery, which means we're going to have some really deep, some really deep cuts and lines in here, less deep here, and a really deep one up here. Um, so let's start building that one up as well. We're going to build in the corners first, try to get our geometry nicely laid out, nicely sensible without making too much extraneous work, and, uh, and then move forward from there. Let's go to an intersection, actually. Okay, so we've got one right here. And then I'm going to lay out this one. I think I'm going to attach it to this one. All right, so now we've got really, really ugly overlapping geometry. But this big long line here is the thing I'm most interested in at this point. Um, I'm debating on whether I just leave this. And again, you'll see why eventually, why I'm just going to leave that ugly geometry for now. But um, if I forget, remind me, I've got some ugly geometry. When we do the whole origami, pop this thing into 3D, you'll see why I've done what I've done. This one, I may make just a whole bunch of little slivers. These inner joints are often really messy. wait for it from Hamilton going through my head. It's a nice thing, I guess. It's just because I watched it on Song Exploder on Netflix last night. Not Hamilton, just the uh, making of wait for it. So now it's gone through my head. Okay, so that little section is done, although we've got placeholder ugly geometry there and potentially placeholder ugly geometry here as well. At some point I may just rationalize this. I may just rationalize, I'm not sure. Oh, little details. I shouldn't really care about them, but I do. We might leave these little splinters and we might not. I'll take a look at what it looks like at the end. Okay, let's go up and do this really complex little section here. And that means I can turn off most of my window head tracery, which will be nice. Uh, and then we'll just do this little complicated intersection here and this little complicated intersection here. And then um, we'll start popping this out into 3D. Oh yeah, we've got to do this one too. Not a problem. Okay, working on this one over here. So let's start at that intersection. Run geometry to there. This intersection is the one we want. Next bit of geometry. Whoa, this is going to be a long and complicated story right here.
So again, I've got a really ugly piece of geometry here, but we're going to fix that once we pop it into 3D. We're going to put in some clever cuts and fix that. And we're going to do that over here too. But for now, we're going to just build this up. We're going to do the same terrible, ugly geometry here as well. this right down there to its intersection all right very good okay so that's all built up good now let's build this up so we're going to build this section here this mullion does not actually blast straight through the apex of the window head. It actually only comes up to the springing of this bit of tracery. So I'm going to ignore all of this and just work on these inner bits here. So there's one. big trick with this one is figuring out where the two are going to join up and it's going to be on the center point. But we'll we'll just kind of find that. In fact, they might join up right here. This will be the point that we need. In fact, we're going to bring that to zero. That'll be the point they match up. And by match up, I mean this little tiny piece, of this head of tracery right here. When it duplicates over, it'll match up right here. In fact, I'm going to delete that. <clears throat> Pardon me again. Went for a run in the cold this morning. Always gives me a bit of congestion. Okay, let's finish building this up, and then we'll build that, and um, we can start popping it into 3D. Should be pretty nice. We're really making a lot of progress. This type of tracery is so easy to build. It's really nice. weren't lining up perfectly and you know how that bothers me okay that now is lining up really perfectly <clears throat> in fact I can add one more bit of efficiency here I can merge those two points I wonder if I can do any of that kind of stuff here one two three I sure can that one makes me happier now I could do it here too. Such a long extended polygon, but because it's flat, it's not a big deal. We'll see how this one turns out. This may be, that may have been a bridge too far. Oh, I've done a bad thing here now. So the bad thing I've done is that this center line here really should go through here. Pardon me. Hmm. 
this is so tight in here, but this triangle really needs to be split and the line needs to come straight down to there. This is such a tight space. Does it? Does it though? No, it doesn't. Hmm. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Because I'm looking at this thinking, well, this mullion's going to crash straight into, it's just going to go straight through here. I don't think it is. I think it's coming up to here and then it's going to curve. I don't know, that looks a little weird. done here yeah that's what we've done here yeah so I need to get rid of those polys and I need to get rid of this poly and I need to do a little bit of work here Okay, that's working out a lot better now. Okay, this is going to be a long and narrow sliver of a polygon, but I think it'll be okay. It shouldn't give us too much in terms of shading artifacts. I think if I move this a little bit more that direction, we might, I don't know. I don't know. One. <laughs> Two. Three. And then this tiny sliver. Might be better just to combine those two. Yeah, I think zoomed out enough. It definitely is better to combine those two. Okay, that's fine. So we've got a weird little triangle here, but that's all right. Okay, it's gonna make this easier to deal with. All right, onward. that one and then snap to that intersection. Nice. And then we're going to build this one up. So let's start with the Eris. Okay, we have to do a cut here. So the cut's going to have to come across here. go. Easy peasy. Okay. Let's finish up this little side here.
I'm going to go all the way into that corner there, then all the way out to this intersection here. And we're going to get another bit of ugly geometry, which we will fix again once we get to the 3D stage. Join all these things together. It just happens to be a convenient little vertex right there, so that's why this is looking so ugly. I might fix that again. I just don't like ugly geometry. This one by rights should probably be here, which is a really thin little piece. This one should be right here. Okay. So we're going to duplicate all of these. We're going to duplicate them over here. And I need a center point to mirror those across and I think we've got a center point right there yep that worked let's go tidy up those verts now so you see that that's two verts that's two verts Okay, we're going to leave this for now. <clears throat> That's two verts, and we're set. All right. Now let's just finish up this little awkward join. trying to think about ways to make this work better, but this will be okay. Yep, there we go. We are almost there. We're almost to the point where we can pop it into 3D. snapping here. Okay. So let's uh, button this up. And move on to actually kind of doing the origami folding now. Look at that, that's beautiful. How nice. Yeah, I just, cusping is so hard and I just don't like the way this turned out, but that's all right. <clears throat> Wait till we get to the reticulated decorated tracery we're gonna do next, which based on how quickly this is going, we might actually get to laying that out this morning. <clears throat> okay. So yeah, here comes the 3D. Just, I'm just double checking that we are okay on all of this and we really are. So yeah, time to start turning this into 3D. So let's go back to these ugly corners I was talking about and um, you'll see what we're going to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all the interior uh, loops of edges, and then we'll just move them in because this is a really simple profile. It's just a diamond mullion profile, not diamond, mull well, yeah, the mullions are diamond shaped.
just going to select all of these. Let's set that selection. Let's save that selection. It might come in handy later. Okay, so we've got all the inner bits made. And we're going to jump into a top view. And we're just going to start moving this in this direction. I did not want you turned on. No snapping here. We're just going to keep moving it this direction. That's probably deep enough for this window tracer. It's probably going to make it good enough kind of diamond. Okay, so there's part of our, that's our main origami fold there. So we've got it all folded out, all nice and neat. Great. So now we have these really ugly bits in here. This polygon, you see how it's overlapping and everything like that. So what I have to do so I have to add some cuts going across here. Um, and then we're going to make this corner nice and smooth. And by nice and smooth, I mean, I could just add a bunch of cuts in to make sliver triangles here and we could call it a day. And on this one, we might do that. On this one, let's see. Well, we may, I don't know. On this one, um, we we want to. What am I trying to say? I really want this is a really nice broad arc, and I would really like to keep that broad arc going all the way along this edge, uh, rather than just making it a sharp kind of fold in. I I would like to make this follow more the curve of these two shapes coming in. So I'd even. This one maybe we can get away with not doing that on, but these inner ones I want to do that on. So, um, but I also need to be able to keep this long sharp angle going smooth. So why we made one triangle here is that when we pop this into 3D, we get the depth of that angle perfectly. So then all we need to do is add our cuts in and then we go back into a 2D view and move them so that we carry across this kind of nice curve shape. So let's do it on all of them. Um, I know it, it creates some extraneous polygons, but let's just do it on all of them and I'll show you what I mean. So let's go back into our orthographic view, get our knife out, restrict our cuts just to the selected parts, and then I'm gonna make I've got to line up this and this. So I'm going to make two cuts across. And then I'm going to weld these two together. And these two. And now, just in 2D, I'm just going to move these points so that they're midway. You see how this isn't midway between the two? So I'm going to move these two points so that they're kind of midway, not these two points, this one point. And I'm just eyeballing it. And now this side, it's a little too subtle maybe to notice, but that keeps, it's as though the curve here of this window is kind of just dying into the curve of this outer frame of the window. Um, does it matter? Probably not. But uh, I like it. And now I can either keep these polygons kind of extraneous, unnecessary, as they are, or I could rationalize them by just doing a lot of sliver um, triangles. But I don't really like putting in sliver triangles, so we're going to keep this as a bunch of quads as far as we are able. 
Although I think I, no, I'm not even going to rationalize that. So um, that's what we're going to do over here too. This is a much more kind of obvious set of uh, ugly polys here. So we will do that on all of these. So. It's going to cut across here and then we'll we'll tidy it up don't worry one and i'm going to get a few of these we'll see all right here we go so let's just start stitching and sewing these together. Whatever height this is, we'll just tidy these up. Come on. should have done it quite like that. Sorry. Let's go back to my selection here. Let's try to be a little bit more deliberate. Let's turn off our snapping. That'll help. Okay, that's better. one's not going to work quite as well, so we're just going to have to eyeball it. Okay, that's better. The reason why I wasn't satisfied the first time um, was because I had made these little cuts across this line here way too high, and if I had moved them down, it would have messed up the curve. And I can see that this is still, oh, because it's limited to visible only. Silly person. Come on, make your cut. Oh, Lord. Okay, there we go. That's better. Oh, come on, cut. Oh, cinema. I'm trying to put a cut in this polygon here, and it's just not having it. There we go. Okay, let's get back to some welding. So was this strictly necessary? No. Um, so why did we do this? Because I can't let this imperfection go. Will anybody notice these details? You will. If you play the game, you'll go, that's some fine tracery. So yeah, so when you play the game, Notice the tracery and say, hey, we built that together. All right, that works better. Okay, time to clean up some more ugly geometry. 
that one. I'm going to say that one's okay. I don't know. I don't like it. The rest is two verts or one vert. Oh, that's good. Let's move it. Okay, ugly, ugly. That's sorted out. Here's an ugly one. Not that one, that one, that one. Those are sorted. This should be the last ugly one I need to sort out. I'm going to leave. Ooh, nope. I didn't sort that one out either. Okay. I just need to cut across. Final piece of ugly geometry. We're going to rationalize this one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's just go check our handiwork just to make sure we don't have any really bizarre shading artifacts. I didn't have any really bizarre shading artifacts in those ugly corners, and I don't because we made nice corners. Good on us. All right, um, one last thing to do is to put some definition into these cusps. So we're just going to grab this single vert that's in the center of each one of the fills of these cusps. Okay, and then we just nicely and easily push them down like that. Good. Then we're going to do the same up here with the four remaining ones. See my playlist is going a little mad because it's a whole bunch of really short pieces in it. I don't even know if you can hear it. Let's push those in pretty far. Okay. So there's our tracery window head. Now all we have to do is just um, 
duplicate it, stitch and sew the inner bits together, and then duplicate it across, and we're done, which would be really cool. So let's uh, get rid of those. Yeah. Easy. So simple, right? So we're going to do something a little bit curvier next. Um, I guess I'll just finish this one off just, just for completeness sake. Uh, and then we've got to do the window frame and stuff like that. But um, in fact, let's, let's do that window frame bit right now. So we'll finish this one off. Um, and then I will lay out, I mean, the layout is the secret thing, but I have to keep working on this. So um, I'm going to lay out the reticulated tracery. The reticulated tracery looks like a, a curvy lattice top. Um, it's pretty easy to lay out geometrically. And then we'll be building that on Friday. And then um, on Monday, probably, we'll be inserting that into the game as uh, buildable options, which would be really nice. And we're also going to break off a piece of this tracery, probably like right here. And we're going to be using that as an architectural piece uh, that uh, the player can find and puzzle over. So that'll be fun. So we're actually getting into gameplay, and we're getting into narrative. Um, all the good parts of design, which will be really, really fun. It'll be really fun also because it means we're getting to the end. I mean, not to the end, but we're getting to the big milestone that I had set up years ago now. We'll be getting towards a playable demo, which is going to be so exciting. I really am thrilled we're getting that far. Mm -hmm. All right. No, we don't want to do that. Just finishing off the window sill here. It's not relative coordinates. Okay. Much better. Looks like a window now. Okay. Let's um, let's save it, and then we're going to just finish it. So what we do at this point is we select it all. We go into a top view. We mirror it. About there. I'll bring it in here, make it a little bit thinner. And now we just need no, that's too bad. Um, oh yeah, around this. There. That's why I wanted to save that inner selection because now we have everything all set up nice and easily for stitching and sewing these together, uh, which will be great. So now we just need to 
pull all this together. So let's go grab our handy old stitch and sew tool. Let's not forget the little parts of the window. Nope, not that. All right, let's go grab our bridge tool just for kicks this time. put together the outside as well. Might as well, why not? So let's grab all of the verts that sit outside. There's not too many of them because as we discussed earlier, this is a heavily faceted curve to fit with the visual style of the game, which is a kind of a Smooth low poly style. I don't know if that's a real thing. But that's a real thing in this game. Okay, let's go back to our stitch and sew. Stitch and sew is so cool because you can stick together multiple things really fast rather than just having to bridge every individual polygon you just stick them all together and we select them all and we align them make sure that our normals are all aligned so we don't get any properly bizarre shading artifacts yep mm, that tracery looks nice you can just kind of reach out and put your hands around it it's really cool i like perpendicular tracery this is pretty boring stuff but i still like it if you don't like it, I'm sorry that you feel that way. And also you're wrong, but you know, we can't all be perfect all the time. I'm only saying that because there's a few folks who just absolutely hate perpendicular tracery. So I'm just having them on. Okay, that should be two polys, it, or two verts. That's two verts, that's two verts, good. So I'm just checking on the axis of symmetry here. Like these guys, not two verts, that's four verts. So I'm join in the middle. Turn it around those two yep join in the middle then where are we gonna put that let's keep pulling that up until it looks like it's about the right width There looks good. And we've got to build all this up now. There's always one or two little awkward points to button up, but it won't take too long. Hi.
So I had to go off mic there for a minute. Um, that was my daughter. Uh, um, she's just getting some of her school supplies. She uses the office during online school. Um, she's pretty heartbroken. She, she's um, top of her class not the very very top she's like there's one student who's above her in the rankings still it's a very good position to be in she has worked extremely hard her entire high school career um, and she's going for scholarships for university and there was a big scholarship that is um, entirely merit-based and um, she really went for this one, and it's been hard for her. It's been hard for her to do to do the schoolwork. It doesn't it doesn't come easily or naturally to her. So to perform so well and not be kind of a natural student is a pretty amazing thing. She's really worked and pushed, and then um, so she went for this scholarship, and. Um, Yeah, she didn't get it. Well, she didn't get through to the second round um, on the scholarships, but she found out another student in her class did get around to the second round of the scholarships, but his um, academic performance, and just generally, uh, his academic performance is much, much weaker than hers, vastly weaker. Um, so obviously it's not entirely entirely just merit-based um, and so she feels like her entire high school career for four years um, has been a total waste and um, she struggles with depression anyway and this is just going to send her into a gigantic crash and we're going to have to rebuild her um, it just stinks it just it just stinks so kind of a bummer kind of down about that. Anyway, sorry to be down about that right here at the end of the stream, but there it is. We've completed our window. Um, easy little perpendicular window, but like I said, we're gonna do an easy little um, reticulated decorated window on Friday. So I'll lay all that out tomorrow and then we'll be ready to, to build up the tracery on that on Friday and then stick it in the game on Monday and carry on with development. So uh, we've done a lot of good work here and uh, I'm very pleased with what we've done. So well done us, we can give ourselves a pat on the back and go forward to face our day. So thank you everybody for joining me on this and we'll see you on Friday. Bye.